Hello and welcome to this edition of the Florida Writer Podcast. I'm your host, Allison Nissen, and this is a discussion about writing and other things. Today, I am fortunate enough to have with me Toya Rochelle. Toya, welcome to the program. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. Why don't you give our audience a 60 second elevator pitch about who you are and what you write? Uh, again, I'm Toya Rochelle. I've been writing for about 20 years. I I actually have a day job where I'm in marketing communications, but I've also published a collection of poems uh, late, late last year, and I'm currently working on a, a, a saga um, for children. Writing is my passion. It's a way for me to express myself, and I think um, it's a way to just connect with uh, people at large, so that's a little bit about me. All right, so you're writing a saga for children. Is this on the lines of Harry Potter? No, it's about it's about a rooster actually who crows at the wrong time, um, and so uh, it's like all of the adventures because um, roosters are supposed to do you know, they've got one job to do and he can't even do that job. So, um, <laughs> so that that's what that's about. All right. Well, that sounds entertaining. I know plenty of people that could relate to that story. <laughs> like dogs you have a, a dog and they're supposed to be your watchdog and you know the, someone breaks in the house they lick them to death exactly <laughs> so, well when did you start writing uh i'm a middle child and i would say that i started writing probably right around eight or nine i grew up in a big family and we didn't have a lot of money uh so I just would create little um, plays, um, little adventures for my sisters and myself. And and yeah, I think probably around nine was when I actually started. I was also very bossy. So in addition to writing, I decided I had to direct our little adventures as well. That is one of the fun things about writing is we can make our characters do whatever we tell them to. Yeah, yeah. You write a lot of poetry. I do, uh, and um, I've been doing, I'd say poetry in particular, um, I was introduced to it in high school, um, or maybe a little bit before that, but actu uh, actually taking an interest in it in terms of creating it and crafting it, um, it I would say right around high school, and I proceeded to write um, for the last 20 some odd years. Um, I've moved around a lot, and so my poems have moved a lot around a lot with me too. And um, so, if there's a notebook in my house, it's probably a poem. Uh, if there's an old napkin or something that's caught in between a book, there's probably a poem. So it's kind of great in one way because there's life just sort of inspires me. But some things are not for other people's eyes or just for my own. So that's always a little bit challenging. <laughs> When you decide to put together an anthology of poetry, you have a lot of things you can sort through and a lot of you can keep in your private pile. Yeah, actually, um, so last year or so, um, uh, back in February, uh, I, it was just randomly a friend of mine um, had been doing a bit of public, um, a little bit of a um, publicity tour for his book. And so I asked him like, what was this process? I was very curious. And I happened to mention what I just shared with you that I've been writing stories and poems for the last 20 some odd years. And um, I was just kind of curious about it. And he was like, no, let's, well, let's put, put out a book. Let's do it. Um, go find your notebooks and let's, let's put your, pull your content together. Uh, and that's sort of what ended up in my first collection, if you can believe it or not. All right, I'm super intrigued. When you pulled together all your notebooks and then you picked out the pieces that you wanted, did you use a theme in order to arrange them? Or are they randomly scattered? Is there a process in order to put them in page one to page 20 to page 60? Well, I'm by nature just like a random person. Um, and so I had been thinking about like certain, I had been thinking about a couple of themes over the years. I think as, a, as I, uh, I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, uh, I had my 42nd birthday uh, in May. I, there's certain things I've been thinking about since I turned 40 about the things we hear about as women and this sort of, I think we're often as just individuals pushed to be per per like just perfect. Um, and, uh, and so my thought was, you know, 
part of why life gets so hard is that it, perfection is just not possible. But um, what's, what's the opposite to that? What can you have if perfection is really un, unattainable? And so to me, I started thinking about well, what makes for a really meaningful life? What, may, what are the ingredients for like a, a meaningful experience? And those are the things that I started to look for like throughout my, my poems. And that's sort of what was my process. And so I, you know, it, I, I just took three minutes to sort of talk about my process, but a, a collection needs to have like a title and a thing that people can, can get to. And so um, I spent actually probably more time than I care to admit on trying to describe that in two or three words. And so that's what, what, in, what eventually came into was Full and round. My thought was, if you're, if you, if you have meaningful experiences, and um, whether it's you know time with your family at family reunions or dinners, or you know you get to see your best friends, the birth of their children, those are those meaningful experiences. And well, you know, one of the things that you know, if you can somehow get through life and you're surrounded by people that care about you, that look after you, that check in for me, check in for you. To me, the meaningful and surrounded by all that goodness, that's what we're kind of if you can have that. And I think that's that's attainable. And so that's the collection that that sort of thinking, that's how I selected poems. Um, and that's sort of what the title of my my book is about. And the title is round, full and round. Full and round. Full and, and round. Yeah. It's a full life. It's a well-rounded life. Yeah. I mean, and that's something that, you know what, to me, that's positive about that too. Like it's tiny little things over time. It, it doesn't have to be that one big thing. And so I feel like that that's a little bit more optimistic, a much more attainable versus I have to be perfect at in my career, in my family, in my relationship by the age of 35. And if not, it's over for you. You go, go on, you know what I mean? But if I did a really good thing today and you know, I really had this wonderful time, that's those tiny little things over time. That's, that's more attainable. Speaking of time, did your poetry evolve from when you were uh, nine, let's just start at the beginning, to now, I mean, have you noticed a big shift in the way you craft your poems? Yeah, I, I, one of the things that, and many of those will never see the light of day, but one of the things is just, I think, as I was younger, they were, they were a lot more me-focused, and as I aged, I, I think um, they were a little bit more um, outward-focused, and just looking and contemplative in a way, looking at um, how other people sort of go through things. A, a, a lot of them aren't even about me. As I as I age, there were things I heard about or learned about, or other people's experiences. And um, so, if you look at just over time, it just became less about me and more about um, sort of this world as we're working through it and other people uh, as well. I mean, I write some poetry. I'd like to say I dabble in it. I do write poetry when mm -hmm. I am in an emotional crisis of one way or the other. Sometimes it's happy, sometimes it's sad, but the emotions are high. Mm -hmm. And it's usually when things are sad or confusing or distressing to me, I will sit down and the thing that comes out is a poem. Yeah. And I consider myself fortunate that I can do that because I can actually take it from my brain and I can put it on paper and it allows me to think about it in a logical way as opposed to being so wrapped up into the emotion of whatever is going on. I wrote one a couple of years ago about a friend whose ch uh, a child had passed away and he had been my son's first best friend. We had moved, we had both moved into different directions and the kids, you know, when they were seven, they didn't keep in contact with each other. But nonetheless, it was one of those moments where I stopped and paused and I wrote a poem and I was fortunate that it was really well received and um, cause I had shared it with a contest, but it's just that poetry really can transport you. When you read someone else's poetry, it can be whatever the audience thinks it should be. And so they connect with themselves in that sort of inner part of what poetry is designed to do, which is 
bring out a different expression of emotion than what we see in everyday life. Or at least that's my thought. Well, no, I love that. Um, I think that's part, part of the reason why sometimes people are a little bit unwilling to even like um, read poetry because it is so emotional and, and because, um, you know, the person that writes it may be in one headspace, but it might inspire something that might be painful or a, something, a thought and an emotion or an experience that they kind of tucked away in the recesses of their brain. And four little sentences brings up full, full force without trying very hard. And so it, I, I'm, I agree with you. It's such a powerful, um, a powerful um, medium to share and for us to connect. And I think, you know, that's why, um, uh, like it's sort of having a, a renaissance moment in that with Instagram and um, you have huge Instagram um, poetry communities, you just have people sharing too. It's that same thing and that people want to connect and they want to share and, um, and really like, especially for um, traumatic emotions, I think sometimes get them out of their head and somewhat it, it almost feels like it's um, like it's the beginning and and an end of a thing like and now that at least you've addressed it it can't like uh, affect you in the same way because now there's these three or four sentences and when you see like all you need is one other person to go oh wait a minute I feel that way too or when I read it it made me feel this way and there's something in beautiful in that kind of exchange that you don't get like maybe in a short story or in a novel because it's not necessarily linear there's much more of a I think a connection point if 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 uh, making sense <laughs> absolutely I think we need to create um poetry therapy groups and just oh. have people read poetry and then what does this make you feel <laughs> of course yeah. I'm not a psychologist not trained in that at all so uh I just do it by you know uh my observations of the world but wouldn't that be kind of a cool thing I to love that <laughs> I think I a lot of people it. would love it. A lot of people would be really afraid of it. They'd be like, whoa, it's like yoga. You know, right. maybe poetry is like yoga in that 20 years ago, nobody did yoga. Only yeah. like the, 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 you know, flower people from Hollywood did yoga. And that was it. <laughs> now yoga, you can't walk down a street without passing a yoga studio. And huh. I find that poetry has been around forever. And yet there seems to be a resurgence in poetry. When yeah. you think about things that are that are coming out now with poets and poetry, I love it personally uh, because I think we have so much. We're in a inter, uh, interesting and odd time, right? And that you can be, you can get communications and news all the time. This is a new phenomenon, and you know that level of of news and communication. Sometimes it's good, but a lot of times it's not. And like, how, how do you deal with that, right? How do you process it? And so I think that's probably why poetry is 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 making a, a, it, the rounds in such a meaningful way because we need to process some of these things and we need to feel connected. And the fact is a lot of people feel disconnected with all this additional communications. And somehow the, 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 this, this medium is, is connecting people and I kind of love it. Um, especially for people like it's my desire to like I all whenever I talk about my collection um, people always go oh I hate poetry and I'm like oh I want to talk to you tell me more why do you hate it and it's usually not the poetry it's not like the words it's that they had a bad experience or their like English lit teacher like said that they hated their poems or you know what I mean and so it's not necessarily just the medium itself it's just the emotion that people associate with it and so yeah I, I'm I'm really glad that people are at least having the conversation and sharing because um, I think we need it yes I think we ought to have um, I had a thought there and now it's totally gone but okay. I think we need to introduce poetry in a different way that it's not scary I know I teach literature uh, to college students and when we, whenever we have to deal with poetry, they're always rolling their eyes mm -hmm. and humming and hawing in the beginning. And by the end, they're like, wow, that was amazing. They just need to be introduced to it in the right way. But I wasn't introduced to it in the right way either. So it took me a while to get it. I mean, I loved Shakespeare. 
mm -hmm. from the beginning. But yeah. I don't know that I'm going to call Shakespeare poetry. So right. uh, while it might rhyme, <laughs> I'm not going to call it poetry. It's not the same thing. Anyway, I wanted to ask if you have any other works that you're currently um, hopeful to finish in a short bit of time. Yeah. Um just so you know, I love uh, Shakespeare too because I feel like it was like the um, reality TV or or soap opera of its time. Uh, Boom! So <laughs> that's that's the right. Yes, exactly. Oh my gosh, no one has ever told it to me like that, and you are so one hundred percent correct. Okay, we could totally go on a tangent but we're not. <laughs> no, 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 but I feel like that's one of the, you, you were asking, of, you were talking about like, how do you get people to, for it to not to be scary? I think when you position it that way, um, people go, oh yeah, I mean, let's just look at some of that stuff. It's, uh, it's all the makings of reality TV and so forth. But what else am I working on? So uh, I am currently working on a saga about a rooster and his only job is to crow, but he crows at the wrong time. And on top of crowing at the wrong time, he gets separated from his, his posse and a mongoose and an iguana um, have to help him sort of figure out how to get back. And so this it's a story of A, you can't do the job that you actually have, but B, like meeting new friends um, that aren't like you and um, that, but they're willing to be your friend and how they sort of help you figure out what, where you need to go. So it's a, right now it's a four or five um, book um, saga, but it's so interesting because now that I've put full and round into the world, now this book, Rudy is his name, is Rudy the Rooster. Um, he's with me all the time. And so I, sometimes I'm laughing because of, like, of things that I think that this little rooster um, would say. So I'd say probably around this time next year, it should be full, at least the full um, first um, chapter of the, or not chapter, but full piece of his story should be out into the world because uh, this past weekend I uh, met with, um, she's sort of a, um, a writing coach slash uh, illustrator coach. And because children, it's the children's book, it's such a, it's a, a, a complete departure from what I did in what I've done in the past, because I've done plays and short stories and poetry, but I've never um, done a book for children. So, you know, her first thought was like, why wouldn't you just go do what you normally do? And I was like, well, where's the fun in that? Um, so, <laughs> Uh, you know, so that's what I'm working on now. All right. And Toya, how can people get in touch with you? Um, they can get in touch with me a couple of ways. Um, my website, toyarochelle.com. Also, I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, apparently, there are lots of Toya Rochelles in the world. So on Instagram, look for me at Toya Rochelle Official. Um, and you'll find me. Toya Rochelle Rochelle, is that what you said? Toya Ro uh, Official. Toya Rochelle, oh, Toya Rochelle official. official. All right. <laughs> okay. This is so much fun. Thank you so much. Well, we are going to move to our rapid fire questions. Are you ready? I'm ready. What did you have for breakfast? Peanut butter sandwich. A multigrain bread. <laughs> nice. Nice. Who says peanut butter is just for lunch? I know, right? <laughs> Do you have a favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, yes, it's uh, double fudge chocolate brownie, and I think it's Ben and Jerry's. It's mm. the biggest diet breaker ever. Like, don't look to see how much you should eat, serving wise or the calories associated, but it's so delicious. So, just a little sample spoonful is enough for no, your calorie it's count? Not enough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I've never ever just eaten the, the, the serving, but it's delicious nonetheless. Mm -hmm. And can you change a tire? I, if by, you know, driving to Tire Plus or um, like Goodyear and paying somebody to do it, is, does that count or no? <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I guess it could count. <laughs> so if, if that does, then sure. But if I have never actually um, popped one off and put one on myself. All right. Well. Toya, thank you so much for stopping by. This has been another recording of the Florida Writer Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Allison out.
Chloe Rochelle is an author and philanthropist. In addition to writing, she frequently leads workshops, moderates panels, and keynotes at conferences. She aims to foster balanced discourse and transformative understanding through her work. Chloe Rochelle serves as Tech to Empower Advisor with Women's Alliance for Knowledge Exchange, Tech Women Mentor, and Mentor with Be Peace, the Business Council for Peace. Toy is a longtime coach for Jobs Partnership Florida and supporter of A Gift for Teaching. Full and Round is her debut collection of contemporary poetry. Published in the mid published in mid-2018, the bulk of the proceeds from Full and Round have been donated to A Gift for Teaching, a nonprofit organization that provides free school supplies to teachers. Born and raised in the Virgin Islands, she currently lives in Florida with her family. You have been listening to another edition of the Florida Writer Podcast, brought to you by the Florida Writers Association. For more information about the Florida Writers Association, visit them on the web at floridawriters.com.